15 years ago. That's how long it's been since I was elected into my first term as sheriff. That's how long it's been since I took up the mantle and took it upon myself to protect and serve this community. I understand this position is more than just a uniform and a badge. Rather, it's a commitment I do not take lightly. Right now, more folk and its people have found themselves in a time of crisis. I'm positive you are all aware of what I'm referring to, and I don't intend to beat around the bush. You all deserve my respect and trust in return for that very same respect and trust you put into me. The deaths of Ellie, Sasha, Claire, and Jackie are deaths that occurred under my term. The term which I earned off the promises I made that I would protect all of you. I failed that promise. I failed the very women who were integral to this community that I failed to protect. The very women I called my friends. But you're not here to give me pity. You're not here for a remembrance ceremony with me as the speaker, giving accounts of my memories with the victims. No. You aren't here for that, and neither am I. I'm here to remind you and remind myself that there are two parts to the promise I made to you as sheriff. I also promised that in the event that I was unable to protect you, I would do everything in my power to find justice for this community. That if something were to go awry, I wouldn't sleep until I could make things right. I failed on fulfilling my first promise to the people of Morfolk. I'll be damned if I failed on my second promise. I'd like to introduce Detective Clark Casper, who is actively leading the homicide case our department has been working on. He's going to fill you in on our progress and plans moving forward. Please lend him your ears. Alright. Thanks, Sheriff Mackey. I'll take it from here. Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to refer to me as Clark. There's no need for formalities at a time like this. I just want to thank you for listening in on our briefing today. Be it those of you who showed up in person, or those of you listening at home. Quite frankly, it shows a level of care and strength that you should be proud of. We're all going through some real, real bad times. So listen up. Here's what's going on. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. The rate at which these murders are occurring is alarming. We're talking about a prolific serial killer who's planning and carrying out their killings at a pace rarely seen. Well, anywhere, really. Even more worrying is that they're not sloppy. This individual is covering up their tracks real well. They aren't leaving strands of hair, fingerprints, or blood. Hell, we can't even tell how they're getting into people's homes. The point is, we're a small town dealing with something huge. This has grown beyond us now. You may have noticed it already, but we're pulling in help from country and state police. FBI, too. Yeah, we're pulling in the big guns. <sighs> Look... I get it. We're a tight-knit community that doesn't like when outsiders get involved with our affairs. You have to understand this transcends our pride at this point. Look around you. Look at the people you grew up with, went to school with, and played ball in the street with. Which one of them could be next? Do you want to be one of the six carrying their caskets on the funeral? Didn't think so. I'm just telling you guys how it is. You know how I am. Not really one for euphemisms. We need the extra manpower to help us patrol the streets at night. Like it or not, our deputies are just a few good men who can't do it all. We need the brains and brawn for the sake of providing extra investigational and security resources to this community. Now, don't be alarmed. We've taken the steps necessary to ensure all this doesn't blow up and get leaked to the entire nation. We aren't going to have a bunch of nosy journalists and true crime fanatics racing down here to shove microphones into our faces. We're going to handle this and nothing more 
because that's our damn job. Now, I'd like to speak on something that I'm sure has been eaten away at you all. Yes, Dennis Bowers is missing. Yes, we are actively searching for him. Yes, we are inviting all of you to join us in the search party over the course of however long it takes to find him. Please don't get the wrong idea. I may be a homicide detective, but my involvement in this case does not mean we are treating him as deceased. It's entirely possible he simply ran off and got lost. He's only being considered missing. And to be honest, our department and its detectives have had their hands so full as of late that we're kind of forced to take on multiple roles at the same time. Hence my involvement in this missing persons case. As I said earlier, we need extra manpower and we're getting it. Just as a reminder, he's five years old, three feet six inches tall, with brown eyes and blonde hair. If you'd like to aid us in our search for Dennis Bowers, we're going to start combing the woods just north of Moorfolk's Park, where he was last seen before going Oh, they're speaking about little Dennis Bowers. How interesting. They don't know what happened to him yet. They're treating him as just missing? How interesting. I wonder if they knew what I was in possession of before they announced such a dirty little fib. How about we listen to a little song and dance, shall we? That's what I like to call it, anyway. Others might call it a piece of performative art. A truth seeker, however, might go so far as to label it a confession hidden in plain sight. Feeling all right, pretty? You look a little pale there. Don't patronize me, fuckface. Good to see you're still an ass. Here I was thinking you'd be a useless thousand yard staring quack. And here I was thinking you'd be too busy sitting behind a desk scribbling on paper like vegetable you are. As hawk as much shit as you do. Vegetable? Funny. You know... I was thinking I'd never have to pick up your alcoholic ass off the road ever again. But here we are. At least this time you weren't face down ass up in a puddle of your own vomit. Guess you're improving, huh? They ever teach you bastards respect the vets? I must have missed that lesson. Which period was that one? Maybe somewhere between the being a useful member of society and the being damn good at my job classes. I was too busy taking whilst you were wanking at your desk. Want to make a little wager? What's that? How many facial bones do you think I could shatter after I reach across the table and bitch smack you? How scary. Hmm, don't know. Want to make a counter wager? Huh? What's the probability that the sound of you slapping me sends you into a series of war flashbacks so brutal that I have to jam an anti-PTSD EpiPen into your thigh? Tch. Good to see you again, Clark. Wish you could say the same, but you were real fucked up last night. I'm getting worried about you. I mean, more than I already was. You know, it's fine. Had a little too much to drink. Shit happens. Yeah, shit happens. Flaking on a date because you forgot is shit happening. Tripping over someone's foot at the movie theater when trying to refill your popcorn is shit happening. Ending up drunk on the side of the road isn't. That's different. It's more than, you know. I get it. Thanks for picking me up. You and the guys have been real good to me at the station. You know I appreciate that. There you go again, avoiding the big problem that's obvious to everyone else. Yeah, well, it's my problem to deal with. It becomes everyone else's problem when every other week you're somewhere shouting outside in the middle of the night or stumbling around someone's house speaking nonsense. You know that. And now, with this, with you passing out in the street? I mean, what if someone didn't see you and ran you over? What then? And they'd have a pretty big dent in their car and a cool story to tell their friends. You're such a fucking moron. 
I never asked a goddamn soul to care about what the fuck I do. That isn't how this works. This isn't how any of this works. People don't care because you ask them to. They care because that's what people do. Well, fuck them. That's your damn problem. So what, you're just gonna drink yourself to death? Is that it? Hell of a fun way to go out, ain't it? Yeah, pretty. Liver failure is so awesome. What a lovely way to be remembered. On my back, Clark, you're right. Liver failure isn't awesome. What I really needed was to get my body torn apart by bullets in a shithole country fighting a war I never asked for. That's where all the real glorious deaths are, huh? It's not what I mean- No, 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 it's okay. You're absolutely right, Clark. Why did you think of that? I should have gone out there and stepped on a fucking landmine and gotten both my legs blown sky high. Maybe that way I could have gotten a pretty little medal put on my tombstone. I sure don't give those out to men who die from alcohol poisoning, no sir. I know what you've been through, but you can't sit here and lecture me on death. Not like this. Not after what I've seen. Oh, sure, you and I are the same, cut from the same cloth. You and me are walking on the same path, ain't we? See, my path had the glorious privilege of seeing Private Steele catch a bullet right between his eyebrows. You remember little Landon Steele, don't you? The run of his family, always carrying a chip on his shoulder. Always used to hang around with us during lunch. I tell you, he never did outgrow those buck teeth of his. You should have seen how they looked when stained all red after he threw his life away from mine. Now that was a sight to behold. I think that's... You think that's what? Here's what I think. I think it was great. He died with real honor and courage, didn't he? The military took me and that boy and made us proper soldiers. Who the hell even is Little Landon Steel? That's private steel to me. I actually, scratch that. That ain't private steel no more. That's a goddamn statistic now. At least his gravestone got a pretty little celebration, right? I think that's enough. What's enough? Enough's a funny word, ain't it? What's enough when it comes to killing the enemy? What's enough when it comes to the amount of blood on your hands? What's enough when it comes to how many drinks it takes you to forget what you've done and what you've seen? You're a good man, Clark. That being said, don't pretend to understand. Seeing the kind of death you've seen is a nightmare. Seeing the kind of death I've seen is hell. At least you can wake up. You always were quite the speaker, you know? Aren't I? My mama used to say so. Her and your dad would have been, don't bullshit me. Yeah, sorry. Look, can you just let me get one thing clear before your next little rant? Whatever, go for it. You may not care about yourself anymore. And I can't force you to. But I'm not going to let you rot away like this. I get it. And you've lost a lot of friends and family. You feel isolated You're a and alone. detective, not a goddamn therapist. Shut the fuck up! I'm going to say what I need to say! Oh well, shit, look who grew up there. Look. I know you're not the same guy I grew up with. That's okay, I'm not the same kid either. People grow and change. Such is life. But there's a difference between change and self-destruction. You got your own demons and I got mine. You're right. I can understand your demons. That doesn't mean you can't have my support in facing them. You know my number. Next time you think about hitting the bottle, take a second to think about calling me. That's all I'm asking for. Just a moment of hesitation on your end. If you can do that for me, then I promise I'll do what I can for you. So will the guys and gals at the station. I'm sorry this country failed you. I sure as hell won't. Guess I'm not the only one who can give a speech. The drama classes were among my favorites. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't stop trying to drag me to them. Right, right. So, do we have an understanding? Fine. 
I'm gonna help you sleep at night. Thanks, pretty. Fuck you. You know I wouldn't even be bothering hearing anyone else out on shit like this. Yeah, I know. That's just how charming I am. Much it. Alright. So, with that out of the way, how's your hangover feeling? You mostly over it? It hurts a little still, but otherwise I'm fine. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, I want you to know you're not in any trouble. We're gonna make sure you get to your apartment all fresh and safe and the like. Though there is one more thing I wanted to ask you about, if you don't mind. Speak up, then I ain't got all day. Right, well, when I picked you up, you were completely out of it. I mean, obviously. However, there was something strange you kept mumbling about. And I just wanted to ask you about it to make sure you were okay. Does the phrase, the woman in the pit, mean anything to you? Oh, that? Or just some dumbass nightmare or hallucination I had, I don't know. Uh, okay. Would you mind telling me about it? I'd appreciate it, really. What's the matter to you? I just ran into you about care and compassion and all that bullshit. Let me show you concern just one last time today and I'll let you be on your way. Yeah, whatever. Look, before I went onto the street and blacked out, I was just walking through the woods. Real good pissing trees in those woods, you know? What? Pissing trees. Trees you piss on. Alcohol makes you piss. I... Okay, j just continue. Yeah, well, I was walking through the woods and heard this noise. It sounded like crying to me. Like a banshee just wailing her heart out. To be honest, I was mostly just pissed off because it was annoying the hell out of me. I was going to head over there and tell the bitch to shut up. Well, did you find the, uh, the woman? Yeah, of course I did. She was in a weird place. I found this, what's it called again? A hatch? Yeah, yeah, a hatch in the ground. I could hear the lady crying from underneath it. So what did you do? What do you think? I went inside so I could tell her to shut up and let me piss on my pissing trees and piss in peace. Oh yeah, as any sane person would. Shut up, smartass. As I was saying, I went down there but it was too dark to see. But you know, kept my trusty lighter on me. Flicked that bad boy out and held up the flame. I tell you what though. I was not expecting to see what I did. And what was that? Well, I found the woman. At least, I assume that's what she was. It was difficult to locate her. She wouldn't stop her crying and moaning. Thing was, she didn't look like any ordinary woman I'd seen. Keep in mind, a lighter flame ain't all that bright. So I had to get up close to really make her out. And how did she appear? She had this pale skin like she'd never seen the sun before. She was nearly bald. Had this massive cut on her stomach. Looked like it was recently sewn shut, too. That sounds pretty frightening. You got up close to her and took in all that? Most people would have booked it. Yeah, well, to tell you the truth, I was kind of disoriented... I was stumbling around and nauseous as it was. When I got up close to her, I mean, I didn't even really know what the fuck I was looking at. I was mostly just really confused. That makes sense. So what then? Then, I mean, I didn't notice this at first. But the longer I looked at her, and the longer I heard the crying, the more my eyes began to water. I was getting goosebumps, man. I started breathing faster, too. I had seen some vile shit before, both on the battlefield and in my nightmares, but I've never felt just as anxious as I did in that moment. But it... Well, shit, it got worse. Worse? How so? I was so focused on her at first that I didn't notice them. Eventually, I did. There were, uh, there were these things. 
for little bloody fleshy things. I couldn't really tell what they were, they were just dead. I thought I saw little hands and fingers on them, just... I know what the scent of a rotting corpse is like. As soon as I saw those things, that's exactly what I smelled. Where, I mean, what, uh, what were these things doing? What, what were they doing? They're all just, uh, just underneath the woman's, I mean, shit. They're all around her breasts. I think they had their mouths on her nipples, but they weren't moving, and nothing was being fed to them. Jesus, that's pretty. There was one more. What? There was one more of those bloody fleshy things. What are you? This one was different. Larger. A bit larger than the others. I'm sorry, it, could you? It wasn't underneath her breasts like the others. It was... I think it was coming out of... I, I mean, I think she was giving birth to it. Giving birth? Yeah. She was pushing it out. Like a baby. But it was too big. Far too big. Her pussy was rupturing and just... Fuck, it was messy. I... Yeah, I could see the head sticking out of her. Christ. Yeah. Those, I mean, its head... Those were the only parts of it that didn't look just mangled. So you mean, it looked recognizable to a degree? Yeah, it, I mean, I think I saw a scalp. As in, yeah, a scalp with blonde hair. This is a lot. You're telling me. What do you... I ran? I ran like my f life fucking depended on it. I, I ran to the street and kept running until I could only walk, and then I walked until I could only crawl, and then... Well, you know the rest. The whole time, I could just hear her fucking crying in my mind. That must have been incredibly surreal for you. No shit, Sherlock. Hey. No need to invoke the name of my lessons. Good one, cunt. You're quite welcome. Now, uh, about that shit you just described to me? It was some kind of damn fever dream. Nothing more. And I like to forget about it whilst I still have the chance. Fair enough. Though, if you don't mind me asking, do you remember where in the woods you saw this, uh, hatch? Hell do you think, asshole? Enough said. It's wild to think what a mind is capable of showing us. Whether it be the hallucinations or nightmares. It's a scary thing. I just wonder why I had those visions specifically. I think we both know the answer to that. Yeah, you're probably right. You've been getting the emails too, haven't you? You've been getting the emails too, haven't you? From that J guy? Yeah, I have. God, the shit that guy spews is unbelievable. We've been trying to track him down, but it hasn't been easy. The point is, he put some really, really bizarre ideas into your mind. Into everyone's mind, really. Thank the Lord most of our neighbors have enough sense not to take him seriously. Though, now and then, I get the sense that some people give him too much credibility. Some nights a station gets egged, other nights people in the shadow shout obscenities at our deputies before running off. Juvenile shit if you ask me. So what? So? I'm saying that when introducing insane supernatural bullshit to the mind of someone like you, who's prone to over drinking and suffers from mental lapses, it isn't unbelievable that something like this would happen. You're a douchebag. It's my job. Yeah, well, I hate to admit that I agree with you. Probably better for my sanity anyways. Is that all? Can I stop talking about this now? Yeah, of course. You need your rest. 
I'll drive you back to your apartment, my s They noticed. They're trying to take the broadcast off air. I'm not finished yet. Have patience. Four babies down. Four pregnant women down. Yet, there is a fifth. Death continues. Why? Isn't it obvious? When a predator has run out of prey, it must find new prey to satiate its appetite. Who knows just how far it will go to adapt. Morfolk police, you know the truth. I know you know. I know you know why this thing is here. I know you know the cause. I know you know you are protecting the man responsible for bringing this plague upon us. You thought I wouldn't find out, but I did. Oh, how easy it is to get the information I want. Still, I am merciful. Come forward. Come clean. Or I will come forward for you. You know who I am. You know what I am capable of. Signing off. J. Hello everyone, Nature's Temper here, just reminding you that we have t-shirts. If you want to support and show your love for the channel, look in the description below. There you will also find a t-shirt design called Bring Back the Wolf. All proceeds of this design go directly to the Rewilding Institute, a charity that I fully support.